Good evening, and welcome to the Easter Vigil at Trinity Fuquay Arena, right to. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members dispersed throughout the world, to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which, by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. O God, through your Son you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. 
Sanctify this new fire, and grant that in this Paschal feast we may burn so with heavenly desires, that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now, all around earth, bright with the glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good always and everywhere. With our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty and eternal God and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O oh God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us that to redeem a slave you gave a son. How holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, Find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past. And, how, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. And now I ask you, if you have the associated booklet, that you turn to the one that is called the Liturgy of the Word. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters of the, from the waters. So God made a dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. So God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the land earth and the waters were gathered together. He called seas and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon earth, to rule the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living thing that moves of every kind in which the waters form and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the, all the earth 
and every tree with seed in its fruit, and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath, has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The word of the Lord. Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. A reading from Genesis. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the six hundred year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were open. The rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Javah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons entered the ark. They, and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature. Then went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was a breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him, to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. 
But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand, took it, and brought it to the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in his beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the six hundred first year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all the flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and and the earth. The word of the Lord. Well, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have placed in the skies the sign of your covenant with all living things. Grant that we, who are saved through water and the Spirit, may worthily offer to you our sacrifice of thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, 
Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt, let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go to the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his armies his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, pharaohs, horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 8, The Song of Moses I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. 
This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior, Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless depth deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretch forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them into safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself. O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our death, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from the slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all the nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy upon them. And to God, our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, 
but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I send it. The Word of the Lord. Lord. Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they may remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the spirit, and you renew the earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to those who thirst for you, that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Psalm 42 verses 1 through 7. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I think on these things, how I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God. With the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God. For I will yet give thanks to him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, Grant that all who are reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and sat me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, 
O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling of bones, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh came upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon those slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, I am going to open up your graves and bring you up from the graves of my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and then you shall know that I, I the Lord, have spoken, and will act, says the Lord, the word of the Lord. Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Zephaniah. For I will leave in the midst of you a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and utter no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouths. Then they will pasture and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you, he has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. 
you shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home at the time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Psalm 126 When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Let us pray. O God of interchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church that wonderful and sacred mystery, by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Please join us as we sing hymn number 207, Jesus Christ is risen today.
you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will continue with the readings for today, and our lectors will be Steve and Karen Teague. Father Steve and Karen Teague. The gradual hymn today is number 205, Good Christians All Rejoice and Sing. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out through them, from east to west, the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good evening. This is the first Mass of Easter. So as we stand here or sit in our houses watching this video, we can know that this is really Easter. It's Easter on a whole lot of different levels. It's Easter because the church has historically um, included this service on the night before Easter as a vigil service. But, of course, we know that in the Bible, every day starts at sundown. So as soon as the sun went down today, it was Easter. Now, every year at this service, because this is the beginning of Easter, I feel this way on Easter morning, too, to some extent, but especially at the vigil. I'm always struck by the fact that Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia, really says it all. Of course, I'm not going to stop talking yet, but it really is the message. It is really the message. I one time heard a priest say, if I didn't believe that Jesus had been resurrected, I wouldn't be a Christian. I would most likely be a Jew. I don't know exactly if that's true or not, but I do know this. It is because Jesus was resurrected that we are followers of Christ. Up until the crucifixion and the resurrection, there were lots of followers of Jesus Christ, and they were followers because, well, they were followers because they saw him do miracles, they heard stories of his healings, they were impressed with his wisdom, they called him rabbi, they knew for sure that he was something more than they were. But the resurrection is something different. The fact that the resurrection is something different is the reason that the day we celebrate the resurrection is the most important day in the church year. It is the most important event. The resurrection is the most important event in the history of the Christian church. So we follow Jesus, because at some time, at some level, we've con been convinced that the resurrection is true, and that the resurrected Jesus is the Son of God. Now, I will say that in this church, right in these pews, People who come into this place, not sure if they believe that or not believing that, but still come, are always welcome. Always welcome. Because you have to get to know Jesus Christ at some level before you can believe. And in some respects, that's why churches are here. But followers of Jesus are, are the followers of Christ, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ being something different from the historic Jesus. Jesus Christ is the risen Jesus, the one that was resurrected, the one that was no longer in the tomb after having been really and truly dead. Was his body stolen? No, they had put a guard on the tomb. It did not in any way suit the Romans for Jesus to be resurrected. 
They needed Jesus to be dead. Even the women at the tomb were taken by surprise to find that Jesus wasn't there. Even though Jesus had said that he would be resurrected on the third day. And his disciples were so un unbelieving of that that they had to run and see for themselves. They couldn't even take the word of the women at the, at the tomb who had run to them with news. It's just really not a bad thing for people to take some time to come to understand that we are followers of Jesus and that perhaps they too want to be a follower of Jesus. Tonight, tonight is a very traditional night for baptisms. For people to be reunited with the church who have been separated from the church for whatever reason, and for people to be baptized who have been prepared for baptism. In fact, as soon as I get finished, we're going to all renew our baptismal vows. I just want to talk a little bit about that. Because baptism is how we become a Christian. I'm not talking about how we come to believe, but I'm just talking about how we, how we are initiated as Christians. How do we celebrate our Christianity? We do it first with baptism. Baptism is a sacrament. In 1979, we got a new prayer book. And at that time, it seemed that only the language had changed. But in fact, some real theology had changed. And one of those changes was this idea of the ministry of all the baptized. And the fact that a person who is baptized is fully a member of the church entitled to everything the church has to offer. Another change that was made at that time is that the seven sacraments were divided into two parts. The two that were instituted by Jesus, communion and baptism, and the other five that have been instituted in the church by human beings since the resurrection. And so we have renamed them. The two instituted by Jesus are sacraments, and the others are sacramental rites. Sacramental rites. It doesn't change their sacramental nature, but it is a recognition that these two things that we do, baptism and communion, are things that we were instructed to do by Jesus Christ. And at this time, when we think about the resurrection and how that has impacted our lives and caused us to be followers of Jesus Christ, we have to think about baptism. We have to think about what we have promised or has been promised on our behalf at our baptisms. What, because baptism defines a Christian. Remember that when a child is baptized, or even an adult is baptized, they are baptized into the whole world of Christianity, not into the Episcopal Church. Every baptized person is part of the same worldwide Christian church followers of the risen Christ. So when we say, Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I'd like for you to give some real thought to that. How in your life, how in your life do you renounce evil? Do you just try not to be the evil one? Or are you willing to call it out in the world around you? to point to it and say, that's, that's not right. That should change. When you say, when we say, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? What do you think that means, will you continue in the apostles' teaching? 
what does that mean to you? What I hope it means to you is that the Gospel, the New Testament, tells us all the ways that we can be followers of Christ. Because Christ told his disciples how to be his followers. The breaking of the bread, of course, is communion. And in the prayers, what prayers are those? Do you think that only the ones in the Book of Common Prayer are valid? Or do you think that they are valid? Or maybe only the ones that you make up yourself are valid? Any time we respond to the impetus of Christ toward us with any kind of a response at all, any time we join in the conversation that Christ has already begun with us, we are praying. It can be out loud or it can be silent. It can be in a group or it can be individual. It can be in anger. It can be screaming. The conversation matters. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? You know, there are some churches that make this their, their primary goal. And they go out from church, sit to tell the gospel story to everyone they meet. All of us are supposed to do that. I am asking you to give some consideration to how long it's been since you told the gospel story to someone who hasn't heard it or who doesn't know it. And then, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I want you to give a lot of thought on this, um, this night, knowing that we will celebrate Easter in the morning again. Tonight I'd like for you to think, how hard would you have to think before you could think of someone who you couldn't love? Think about the world, the history of the world, people that you know, is there someone who you believe you couldn't love? Seek Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself. Why are we doing this? Because followers of Christ need to make a difference in the world. And we have some instructions right here. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Will you strive for justice? Does that mean sitting in front of the television and thinking, man, that's too bad that happened? Or I can't believe those people would do that. It's very easy to think, I don't understand that those people say they're Christians and then they do something like that. But we're not any different at all from them if we're not willing to say to the world, that's not just and justice matters. That's not just, and justice matters. Now, this is in fact a wonderful night. Our risen Lord has expectations of us. And I pray that as we go forward into the season of Easter, the 50 days of Easter, we really, really contemplate our baptisms and think about the risen Lord and all that we owe him. And that's going to be the topic of my, of my sermon tomorrow morning, really, is what did Jesus give us in this resurrection? How have we benefited from the resurrection? Tonight I want to talk about what do we owe for this resurrection.
please think about your baptismal vows. Think about how Jesus being risen matters in our lives. It's not just a day. It's not just an event. It's not just great music that we only sing once a year. It's not a time together with our whole community because everybody comes to church on Easter. This is a time for us to think about being followers of Christ. Why do I follow Christ? What is it about Jesus Christ that makes me want to be there with him? Because each year that we do that, we will find ourselves closer to the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. So now we begin um, with the renewal of baptismal vows. And I, I will ask you a question. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, Keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Sam and Ann, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For those suffering from COVID. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your heavenly kingdom.
Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please join us in the offertory hymn number 182. tomorrow morning service, you are invited to join me on the lawn in front of the church for a distribution of communion in honor of Easter. But one important thing is that it will not be at 11 o'clock as usual. It will be at 1 o'clock um, in order for us to uh, leave time for those of you who, who gather as families on Easter morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us. And has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. <laughs> Let us pray. 
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you tonight and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn today is Welcome, Happy Morning.